Okay, welcome to The Edge in economics. We take a topic, in this case, monetary policy. Uh, we ask uh, 10 questions, 10 multiple choice questions, which will allow you to test your understanding of this topic and uh, see where you are with your revision. So these questions are all about monetary policy, which of course involves the central bank potentially taking action to influence uh, interest rates, the supply of money and credit, and also critically, don't forget, to influence the exchange rate. If you are, are in the revision webinar live, post your answer in chat. If not, have a pen and paper handy. Write down your answers. Keep your own score. Let's see how far, how well you do on these 10 questions. Here we go. 10 revision blast questions on monetary policy. Question one. A surge in world commodity prices causes an increase in inflation for a small country. How would an increase in this country's interest rates be most likely to reduce the impact of higher commodity prices on the inflation rate in the short run. Press the pause button, have a think about your answer. I'll be back in a few seconds with the correct response. Okay, so the answer to question one is C, by causing an appreciation of the exchange rate. A rise in interest rates leads to an inflow of hot money that will cause the uh, exchange rate to appreciate. And if the currency appreciates in value, then imports become cheaper. So for example, imports priced in dollars for this small country will become cheaper, and that would help to bring down the inflation rate. It would help to dampen the cost push inflation effect of a surge in world commodity prices. Let's move on to question two. In an economy with unemployed resources, the government increases spending. When would this be least likely to increase national income by the full multiplier effect? Have a go at this question, press the pause button and press play when you're ready to go through the answer. So this is a question which brings fiscal and monetary policy together. The government increases its spending but when will the multiplier effect of an increase in G be kind of muted or reduced? And the right answer is D, when the level of interest rates goes up. Uh, if monetary policy doesn't respond to this, then the multiplier is probably gonna, gonna work its way through. But if interest rates go up, then we can expect, for example, the marginal propensity to save of consumers to go up. And given that the multiplier is one divided by the uh, propensity to withdraw from the circular flow, if the savings rate goes up, then the multiplier effect will go down. OK, here is question three. A country's central bank decides to decrease their policy interest rates by 2%. What is this most likely to result in? What is this most likely to result in? Have a look at the four options and then come back to me when you want the answer. So they've cut interest rates by 2%, and uh, that is an expansionary monetary policy. Which of these options do you think is the most likely effect? Well, the correct answer to this question is B. We'd expect the savings ratio to go down because the perhaps the real return on savings has fallen. So the propensity to save would reduce. And we'd expect a fall or a depreciation in the currency because if, in, if interest rates go down, we'd expect to see hot money flowing out of a country, perhaps to another economy where the relative interest rate is higher and the return from investment is greater. So the answer to question three is B. Let's move on to question four. How might quantitative easing, or QE, how might QE help to stimulate economic growth? Have a go at this question. OK, what did you put for question four? What's the impact of QE? QE, QE of course, is a, a form of unconventional monetary policy designed to stimulate the economy, stimulate demand, and also perhaps prevent deflation. What's the main way through which it works? The answer to question four is C, by reducing long-term interest rates. Under QE, the central bank typically buys government bonds. 
This increase in government bond demand causes the price of bonds to go up, which in turn reduces the yield or the interest rate on government bonds. As long-term interest rates go down, it's cheaper for governments and corporations to borrow money. Uh, money will flow out of bonds into things like stock markets and other, other forms of investment. Let's move on to question number five. Which combination of fiscal and monetary policies is most likely to be effective in the short run for tackling deflation in the closed economy? So a country, closed economy, doesn't trade, has deflation. Which combination of policies is most likely to tackle that? Have a go at the question. Okay, correct answer to question five is A. Fiscal policy, well, you'd probably be looking for an expansionary fiscal policy. One way to do that is to increase the size of the fiscal deficit, perhaps through an increase in government spending or a reduction in tax. And you could also operate with an expansion in monetary policy by cutting the interest rate. A good example there would be a country like Japan, which has had very low interest rates for many years now, and has also had some fiscal expansions to try and get rid of the deflation in the Japanese economy. Uh, here we go. Here's question six. How is the pursuit? How is the pursuit of quantitative easing by a country's central bank likely to affect the price of government bonds and also the country's foreign exchange rate? How is QE likely to affect the price of government bonds and the country's exchange rate? Have a go at question six. So what do we reckon for question six? Two things to look for. Let's work through this systematically uh, before I show the answer. If the central bank is using QE, they're buying government bonds. So the demand for bonds will increase. Therefore, the price of bonds will increase. So it has to be A or B. If the price of bonds goes up, then the yield on government bonds goes down. So interest rates in the economy with QE will be lower than they perhaps would otherwise be. And therefore, if interest rates are lower, what's likely to happen to the exchange rate? Well, hot money will flow out of the country, uh, and therefore the exchange rate will depreciate. So therefore, the answer to question six is B. Now, if you got that right, hats off to you, because that's not an easy question. What about question seven? Now, this is tricky. A country has a floating exchange rate and an independent central bank with the power to set interest rates. The inflation rate is currently stable at the target of 5%. But what is likely to happen to interest rates and also to the exchange rate if the bank is given a lower inflation target of 2%? Well, press the pause button, have a think about this question. and Just press play again when you want to go through the answer. So what do you think the answer is to question seven? The inflation rates come down. The target for inflation has come down. So they need to get inflation down from 5% to 2%. So that typically would need higher interest rates, at least in the short term. So interest rates are likely to go up. Therefore, the answer is either C or D. Well, if interest rates go up, that attracts hot money into, a, into an economy. And other things being the same, that will cause a floating exchange rate to appreciate. Therefore, the answer to question seven is D. OK, hope you're doing well on these ones. Three more questions to go. Here's question eight. An expansionary monetary policy designed to increase aggregate demand is less likely to achieve this objective, less likely if at the same time the government does what? So the central bank is expanding monetary policy. When will a government response um, hold back the objective of increasing AD? A, B, C or D? You choose, press the pause button and press play when you want to go through the answer. So what policy decision by the government could, if it sense, counteract or offset the expansion of monetary policy by the central bank? Well, the correct answer to question eight 
is D, some form of fiscal austerity, maybe a cut in government spending or maybe an increase in tax designed to reduce the size of the fiscal budget deficit will be um, a factor holding back the impact of expansion in, expansion in monetary policy. Now here's question nine. Which combination of changes, and the three factors listed here, which combination of changes is most likely to bring down the inflation rate for a country? Have a go. Okay, the correct answer to question nine is, is B, a higher exchange rate, a fall in indirect taxes, and a slower growth of the money supply is most likely to bring down inflation. First of all, the higher exchange rate brings down the cost of imports. That will have a direct effect on inflation. Uh, and it also squeezes export demand, affecting AD. In the short term, if you cut indirect tax, such as VAT or duty, that causes an outward shift in supply curves, brings business costs down and puts downward pressure on price. And thirdly, if you restrict the growth of credit, that will weaken aggregate demand and may cause interest rates to rise. That will be a deflation in monetary policy, again, bringing down inflation. So the answer to question nine is B. How are we doing? Here's our last question. Which one of the following statements relating to monetary policy is correct? Which one of the following statements relating to monetary policy is correct? Have a go. Come back to me when you're ready with the answer. On the surface, a relatively straightforward question. What did you get for this one? Maybe there's a hidden meaning here. The answer is B. Cutting interest rates always increases inflation? No. The world always, of course, can't be right in multiple choice. Um, B is right. Let's just quickly look at the other options. C, interest rates do affect aggregate supply. For example, they might affect planned capital investment by businesses, which would have both demand and supply side effects. An increase in interest rates will raise investment. No, in fact, the other way around, normally, if the cost of borrowing is higher, planned investment will be less. B is right. Um, yes, interest rates going up will help to counteract excess demand, but businesses, for example, might have loans on variable rates of interest, and therefore higher interest rates could increase the cost of production that they face. So the answer is B. Well, I hope you did OK on this test. I reckon a score of more than seven was, is a good score. If you'd like to go to our landing page for monetary policy, where we bring together all of our best resources for monetary policy, just point your smartphone at the QR code in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and hopefully, if I've got the technology right, that should take you to the monetary policy landing page. Okay, thanks for joining in on this, this version.